dinner and game for Bob Adams on December the 8th. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet over here on the console that's beneath the poster rail. As I've mentioned before, that's a stack game that's spelled S-T-A-C, which stands, stands for Sectional Tournaments at Clubs, so it awards silver points. We're going to start serving at 12 noon, and the game will start at 1. It promises to be a huge game, so there will be lots and lots of silver points awarded, uh, lots of places, and if we have three tables of 0 to 20s, we'll have a 0 to 20 section, I promise. So, and then on the 15th, the unit will be having the annual Christmas party. Starts at the same time. They're asking that you bring sides because they're going to provide the entree. Uh, on, at Bob's dinner on the 8th, <coughs> Steve Fossey is providing the whole meal. Fun and Games is providing all the drinks. But Steve has asked that people bring a dessert that they particularly like to share. Let me tell you, there are some fine cooks in this club, so there are going to be some mighty good desserts. I can promise you that. So, um, that's on the 8th and on the 15th. 8th and noon, game of uh, Yes, both. on both of them. Okay. There will be a little time on the 8th for people who knew Bob for a long time. I mean, he played in, in Oklahoma City Bridge for at least 50 years. Uh, knew everybody, and everybody knew him been around that long. And so I'm sure there will be lots of stories that people have to tell. Bob, Bob is kind of a character. And I think you'll recognize it when you look at his picture or any of you who ever played in any of the bigger games. He was pretty quiet in his later years, became very shy. But he was actually quite a character. <laughs> Before he uh, developed kidney failure, was on dialysis for several years, and eventually had a transplant. But uh, at any rate, he died unexpectedly last month, as most of you know, I'm sure. And we miss him a lot. He was here every day we were open. Did you hear the sound? Nice. We have an ice maker again. As a Yay! Jim is so tired of buying ice. <laughs> We've been without it now for more than a month, but we got a new compressor. And getting the thing fixed cost as much as a new one would have. <laughs> Had I known that, we wouldn't have gone with that for as long as we did. But in the future, we, we won't be fixing one. Uh, for the record, we will be closed on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, we do have a 0 to 20 game on Thursday mornings, but we will not be having it that day. And Steve Mayer's class, uh, Beginner 3, will not meet that night. So, uh, he's tacked an extra one on the end to make up for missing that week. Also, we'll be closed December the 30th, I'm sorry, November the 30th, December 1st and 2nd for the unit sectional tournament in Edmond. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yes? But you are having games next Tuesday? Yes. Okay. If you guys are going to be here, I'm going to be here. No, that's, uh, I, I, I'm having the family <coughs> Thanksgiving, like, I needed one more thing to do, but um, I'm going to be here Tuesday night. Uh, so anybody who's not having family come in or who finds themselves with a little time on their hands, come on out. We'll play some cards. No, well, and if you have too much family coming in, just bring them along. <laughs> From the family, yeah. If you have too much family at your house, you can come over. That's, that, that sometimes is the case. Before you guys hear it from anybody else, I'm going to tell you the effective December 31st of this year that I will be stepping down as club manager of Fun Games. Uh, the job has gotten to be simply more than I can handle. Uh, I'm going to stay on as executive director of the nonprofit, but uh, the board of directors was told yesterday and they're in the process of looking for a new club manager. Things will essentially be the same going forward, and I'm still going to be around. I just have to shed some of my duties. It was either give up that or give up teaching and directing or playing, and I didn't want to do any of those things. So that's that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm still, be, still going to be here day and night. Uh, just yeah. like I always am. But I'm just not going to be doing the monthly reports and the, the shopping and the calendars and all that kind of thing. 
That's yeah, all that fun kind of stuff. That's right. And handling problems with I'm not getting your emails anymore. What why am I not getting your emails? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of thing I'm happy to give up. <laughs> we ask your patience as we uh, go through the changes here. There will be a few hiccups, I'm sure, but nothing too major. And uh, it remains to be seen if I... Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm still going to be doing this. Yeah. Well, good that's, for you. Uh, that's, I, um, I don't know. It remains to be seen if I can relinquish that much control. <laughs> Most of you know that I'm a bit of a controller. <laughs> so, we'll see. But, all right, this is the last night of Opener's Rebids. So, let's talk about how the opener rebids. Most of you are pretty familiar with what it takes to open the bidding and what it takes to respond when your partner has opened. So tonight we're talking about what to do when you have to make your second bid because it is the most important bid and bridge. Here we've got a couple of examples because we've been talking about how to show the differing number of <laughs> points in the hands. Uh, this first one, can all you guys down, down there see this one? North, these are all, North is the opening bidder on all of these. This is his hand. He opens a two no trump. Everybody agree with that? 20 high card points. His partner bids three clubs. What is three clubs? Statement. That's right. How does opening bidder respond? Three hearts. Okay. What happens next is that the responder bids three no trump. He bids three hearts. Pass. Now south bids three no trump. What does north bid now? Four hearts. Four spades. Four spades, yes. Four spades. How does he know to do that and not pass three no trump? Because he did his demon, so he has a four card. Yes. When his partner bid three clubs, he said, I have at least one four card major. When you're responding, you bid your four card majors up the line. Remember? Four card majors up the line, five card majors higher ranking one first. So he bids three hearts first. Partner says three no trump. Nope, doesn't match, partner. So it's got to match in spades. So it has to match in spades. Has to match. And you do have a little shortness here. So it would be a pretty good idea to be playing in a suit, most likely. It would be an advantage. The only thing uh, that's different between this three clubs and two clubs over a one no trump opening is what? How is that different? Number That's true, but what does that say about his hand? How many points does he need? He's got at least a five or six. Yes, five or six. Kitty, you're exactly right. How many does he have to have to bid statement over a one no trump opening? Eight. eight. At least eight. So the requirements go down as the number of points that the opener shows goes up. Right? Make sense? Sure. Doesn't take quite as much to bid statement over a two no trump opener as it does a one no trump opener. So after West passes, North bids four spades. Confident that there's a four four fit. All right, let's try another one. You guys did it. On the same one, let's say South bid um, uh, three uh, diamonds. Now, now he's transferring, right? Yes, can yes. He, can he do that? He can still do that with zero points? Yes, absolutely. And should if he yeah. has zero points. Uh, doesn't work well trying to play no trump out of your hand. Yeah. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. North hand. One heart. Everybody agree with that opening bid? Partner bids three hearts. What does three hearts show? Invitation. Ideally, he has four hearts, right? What's his point range? 11, 11 to 12. Average of 11. Uh, a good 10 to a bad 12. Just give him 11 general rule of thumb. This is North's hand. What should he do next? How many 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, to no Trump is not the right rebid, is it? No. Even though you're balanced and you have 18 high card points, all of a sudden when partner bids spades, the value of your hand goes up. Because you have doubled it. Now it's worth 19 points. Yes, at least six. What category of hand is that? Maxi. That means if partner has only six points, you have enough for game. He who knows goes. So what does one bid? Four spades. Four spades. If he has more than what he promised, he'll go on. Uh, yeah. Why would yeah. you do the heart? Because you don't. You don't do that. Support with support. You know you have an eight card fit. Yeah, you still can come back with it. Bid four spades. <laughs> Bid four spades. You don't have to jump ship. Mike, you don't have to jump ship to show your strength. You show that by bidding four spades over one spade. It shows the same level hand. And you know there's a 4-4 four, four fit? Go ahead. Where's the number one place we want to play? Golden fit. An eight card major suit fit. Which is the best kind of eight card major suit? Four, four. You've got it. It may be that the responder has five, and then you've got a nine card major suit fit. That much better. So, let's talk about this third hand for just a minute. I'll put partner's head up there. I want to talk a little bit about the danger hand. Here is your partner's hand. Let's put it down here. Make it easier to see. This is what my spade suits usually look like, <laughs> just in case. What does partner bid after you bid one no trump? What's he going to bid now? Can you see that? Uh, it's got 13 one, points in it. When he go one club, it's because he has four little clubs. I mean, one spade, I want partner. No, it's after it's one diamond, one spade, one no trump. Three no trump. He's checked for. He's checked for a four four spade fit. Partner denied it. Says I have a minimum opening hand. Well, I have enough for game. He who knows goes. So he bends it. How many tricks do we have in spades? None. How many, how many tricks do we have in spades? We have zero. Spades, we have zero. No guarantee. You don't know where the ace of spades is. That may be dead in the water. How many heart tricks do we have? Two, two, two. How many diamond tricks do we have? Two, two. And how many club tricks? Three. 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 Oh, oh. What does that add up to? Seven. Two, seven. Seven. Is that enough? No. 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 Now the opening lead is the Queen of Hearts. What else does the opening leader have? Jack. 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 Well, he doesn't have the nine because the nine's right here. He's got the Queen Jack Ten. <laughs> this is a no truck contract, and you should have three cards in the sequence. Opening lead is the Queen of Hearts. So now here's our eighth trick. Doesn't make any difference if this guy takes the ace or not. If he takes the ace and leads it back, you're going to win that king for force, right? If he doesn't play the ace here, you've got to go up with that queen immediately. Because if he holds the trick, well, he won't hold the trick with the queen. But if he plays the jack and this one takes the ace the next time, then your king will drop. Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be a whole bunch of hearts on the table, and what are you going to do? Well, you've got the ace, right? But... What's worse than a heart lead for you? Spades. Spades can be really bad mm -hmm. if uh, this guy over here gets back in the lead and leads a spade through that king, right? So whatever you do, you don't want this hand on the lead. You have eight tricks in the bank, don't you? Where are you going to get the ninth one? Diamonds. 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 How are you going to play the diamonds? Ace, king. No. What if they don't drop? Yeah. 
you two. What, what, what's, how, how are four outstanding cards in a suit most likely to break? Three one. Three one. That's right. So you got you got to lose one. You got to lose a trick, don't you? Yeah. Got to lose a trick. What happens if you lose it to this guy over here? That's bad. Bad. Really bad. So if you're going to take a finesse, you need to finesse in this hand into this hand because he can't hurt you. Do you see that? This is called the danger hand because if he switches to spades, this is the dummy, by the way. And if he gets in the lead, or this fellow gets in the lead, dummy on the right lead the weakest suit inside. If he's on lead, he puts a spade, looking up, looking at this dummy, weakest suit of spades. It's what I do. I put a spade on the table. Yeah. And, and you know that he's, you know, you, you can't tell the ones that are spades since you can't. Just... Well, yeah, he knows that you don't have four spades because you're not playing in spades. And then when this spade suit comes down, this guy's kicking himself for not leaving the spade. But you never know what somebody's got when they've been a spade, do you? So, the concept here is the danger hand, and that is the hand that can lead through your exposed key. This is called a hanging key. And you want a hand that has a hanging key to be the declarer, so the lead comes up to it. That's another reason we use transfers and statements when we open a no trump, is to make sure that the strong hand with these kings in it has the lead coming up to it. We'll talk more about the danger hand in a week or two. How about that? Once upon a time, George Bernard Shaw was at a dinner party. And he was sitting next to a beautiful lady. And they were having quite the conversation. They were pretty smitten with each other. And eventually he says, sleep with me for a million dollars. And the woman says, well, I believe I might. And he says, well, then how about for two dollars? Well, what do you think I am? A common whore? <laughs> well, my dear, we have already established that fact. Now we're just handling about the price. 